Welcome back everyone to our last arc length example video. This is example three. We've got a little bit of the strange factoring in this problem as well as we've mentioned earlier. Uh, so I've got my function which is x cubed over 6 plus 1 over 2x and notice the x is on the bottom in the denominator. My interval is from 1 to 3. So here's my a and here's my b. We're going to go ahead and use the formula we've been using so far. Uh, so my f of x, the function, is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite these slightly. So I'm going to say 1 sixth x cubed. I'm going to say 1 half, and since this x is on the bottom, this is really x to the minus 1. Might be nicer to see that when you do the power rule. If you don't need to do that, then don't worry about it, but it might help to see it this way. So power rule, the 3 is going to come out, right? So that would be 3, 6. Power will go down by 1, so that would become x squared. Uh, now here, the derivative negative 1 comes out, so I get minus 1 half. And then the power goes down by 1 here, so I would say x to the minus 2. We have that. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 1 half. So this will be 1 half x squared minus 1 half x to the negative 2. That's our f prime. Now we'll need to square it for part of our formula here. So f prime of x squared. If we do this one, I'm going to write out two copies before I do this. So that would be 1 half x squared minus 1 half x to the negative 2 times itself. And if you need to do this to see how it distributes, that's fine. Certainly do that. If I go ahead and distribute these, I get the first terms. Half times a half would be a fourth. x squared times x squared would be x to the 4. Uh, and then if I do the outside terms, so I get positive times negative is negative, half times a half is one-fourth, and then x squared times x to the negative two is really x to the zero. And I get a similar thing because these are squares whenever I distribute the inside terms. I get a negative one-fourth x to the negative two times x squared is x to the zero. And then for the last terms, I have negative times negative gives me a positive here, one fourth, and then x to the negative two, x to the negative two, that gives me x to the negative four. Okay, so the next thing we write down, I'm gonna make a note of this. Now this is just a one here, each of these x to the zeros is just a one. So this is really minus a fourth, minus a fourth. So the thing we want to notice and keep in mind when we're figuring out how this really strange factoring pattern thing is to seems to work with these problems. If I have negative a fourth and negative a fourth, that's negative a half plus one fourth x to the negative four. Okay, so the idea is now in my formula, I would take what I just got and I would add one to it. So if I add one to it, in other words, if I take the one plus f prime of x all squared, then adding one is going to change this negative half to a positive half. And as mentioned before, when we distribute a perfect square and we get something, and then we change the sign of its middle term, then we get something that factors the exact same way but with the opposite operation in between, okay? This is an unrelated problem, but so for example, if you have x squared minus 6x plus 9, then that factors into x minus 3 times x minus 3. If I have x squared plus 6x plus 9, then that factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3. So when I change the sign of this middle term here, and I know it came from a perfect square, you can figure this out, although we don't usually see something like this when we factor. This actually is going to be 1 half x squared plus 1 half x to the negative 2 all squared. Okay, so it came from distributing the minus, we got a negative one half with these two terms. If I change that to a positive half, that means these one fourths would have been positive and it would have come from having a sum of these two terms inside of the square. So this is actually what goes inside of your root when you do this problem. 
Okay, so I know that's a little bit strange when you're first doing these. So let's remember that our length now is from one to three. And we'll have the square root of one half x squared plus one half x to the negative two, all squared dx. So the square and the square root will reduce one another with these positive terms here. So we will get integral from 1 to 3 of simply 1 half x squared plus 1 half x to the minus 2. So these are now again just power rules, nothing fancy to do here. Very convenient factoring has occurred. And we'll now do these. So if I take the antiderivative, so I would raise the power. Power would be 3, so that'd be x cubed. And then divide by 3. Since I already have a 1 half, if I multiply by a 1 third times 3 on the bottom, that would give me 1 sixth. And then similar thing here. Power rule, I have x to the negative 2. So if I add 1 to the power, that will be x to the negative 1. Now if I divide by the new power, that becomes negative 1, so this actually becomes a minus 1 half, and then we will evaluate from 1 to 3. Okay, so plugging in, I'm going to go ahead and bump this down. So I am going to go ahead and say uh, 1 sixth x cubed minus 1 over 2x looks distinctly like what we started the problem with, doesn't it? All right, so plugging in, we get 1 sixth times 3 cubed would be 27 minus, um, plugging in a 3 there, we would get 1 over 2 times 3, which would be a 6 there. Subtract, plugging in 1. So now if we plug in 1 here, we'll get 1 sixth times 1, which is 1 sixth. And then plugging in 1 here, we will get 1 over 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep, I could reduce this, but getting common denominator might be easiest if I just leave it over six, minus one over six, minus another one over six. I'll go ahead and change my one half to three over six, and I have minus negative, so that would be plus three over six. Okay, so over six, 27 minus one would be 26, minus one more would be 25, plus three would be 28. And if we go ahead and reduce that, then we can say 14 thirds. And since it's length, then we will just be in units. All right, so those are our videos on arc length examples. If you haven't checked the other example videos out, be sure to do that. Uh, surfaces of revolution are next in our series for Calculus 2. We will see you in the next video.